Hi, uh, this is uh, Rooney207. Uh, welcome back. For today's episode, we'll talk about League of Kingdoms. And I wanted to kind of uh, do a macro a thesis a brain dump on the current state of the game and then what I think is the potential uh, for the game and the roadmap uh, long term. And I think uh, League of Kingdoms is one of the unique uh, games as it presents a hybrid model between Web 2 and Web 3. It also provides a uh, micro transactions because it's available on both the Apple Play Store and the uh, Google Android uh, store. And uh, you can see here from a, a transaction perspective, it allows someone that's a whale or a dolphin or someone willing to spend a fair amount of money. It's uh, similar to the Rise of Kingdoms model. It's a pay to win uh, model where a player can come and they can consistently on a regular basis, whether it's daily or weekly, uh, they can spend a decent, a substantial amount of money to catch up. So a new player that's starting in a new continent can potentially uh, catch up fairly quickly in, the, in this game by spending. And they can buy the various um, bundles and uh, packages, the VIP packages and the crystals to be able to uh, catch up to another player. So I, I think that's one of the key element is that it's a uh, pay to win model. Uh, but what's unique is that the, you don't have to really spend as much to be able to enjoy and be able to make a decent amount of uh, money on a monthly basis, especially if you're from a um, uh, underbanked uh, country or unbanked country, you can take advantage of the other side, the hybrid other hybrid uh, component of which is the Web3 model. And the Web3 allows you to uh, contribute to uh, your crystals. You can actively farm your uh, crystals on a daily basis. You can go, uh, go out and uh, make the uh, crystals, and then you can use that to put in. Uh, so whales who, has, uh, who are willing to commit to the LAN uh, model here, uh, they can buy a three by three grid and then you can put it uh donate the crystals to their farm and you can help them grow and be able to monetize the daily uh, loca uh, collection piece and they'll happily provide you a certain number of us dollars um, depending on the amount of crystals that you commit and they'll have a schedule for, for that a way to monetize that then you can as a uh, underbanked player or someone that just wants to spend as little as possible or play for free you can uh, you can retain and earn either the uh, the us dollar component the fiat uh, whatever the model or the loca depending on what it is that the um, the person that owns that three by three grid land they're willing to uh, exchange for that you can uh, you can make it and then you can take that you can buy your own land eventually or you can uh, take it and you can uh, use it to buy other packages that there are within the game so, so what's nice about this is that some of the package that you're you can buy the vip package using your loca vouchers that you earn within the game itself um, through this uh, menu and uh, that's uh, that's a hybrid model. So I, I think League of Kingdoms is a very unique uh, game from that perspective. Is that it's effective, um, like allowing you to grow. Um, and then the other component is that you can you can continue to farm resources, and you can take the amount of money. I think uh, Dragos it's quite expensive right now on a relative uh, terms. But if you can find one that you can uh, later on, I think uh, the 17th of this month, the rental uh, program will start. So you can do the rental program. You can take that Drago and you can do the exchange, pay the small amount on the Polygon network uh, piece. And then you can take it and you can actually uh, mint 100 million uh, resource token that you can sell on either OpenSea or the Polygon network. I believe the Polygon will be cheaper because it's uh, not um, Ethereum based. And uh, also it's um, there's like uh, on the Tofu uh, NFT market, it might be you might get better deals. Uh, just it just depends. And you kind of have to do your uh, your own research on that to see what makes the most sense uh, for your situation um, at the given time. So I, I think there's definitely ways that you can you can do that. So you, eventually you can 
uh, perhaps if it makes sense, you can buy your own Drago when it, it's uh, more affordable when a number of players have already minted it and they're, um, they're either going to rent it out really cheap because they have a lot of them because it's uh, it's very difficult after a certain level that you're you're unlikely going to create many Drago fusions because the cost is just so so heavy unless it you get lucky and you ha you have a particular uh, dragon legendary trait that you're you're looking at and it, it makes a, a lot of sense um, and also like one of the things that we're still very early in the game itself when when you look at I'm in continent four here but when when you look at the growth of the game it slowed down significantly because of the um, the bear market uh, current so there and this game is very similar to rise of kingdoms uh rise of kingdoms uh, has grown to in the um, in the thousands and then here you can see that we're still on the 59th continent we haven't even reached 100 continent and the beauty of uh, the land hopefully over time we can have the land where it stacks and we'll be able to collect uh, a little bit more than the current uh, locus schedule uh, piece so that's one of my uh, hopes the the, the other uh, component of this is that you can slowly develop uh, your your own uh, city here uh, your own uh, co kingdom castle into uh, where you can uh, maximize it and then you can add you can earn the uh, continent versus continent rewards and then you can migrate you can do the uh, the loca uh, or the uh, the loca vouchers and also the uh, the use playing with the monsters and the spartoids you can earn a significant amount of crystals in, in the process a, as well through the uh, through the various aspect so I, and I, I think one of the things that I I've, I've been doing which is a I, I believe it's a negative reflection of the uh, on the game itself is that um, so it, it currently do do not have its own stable uh, coin uh, currency good or bad and due to the fact that they don't have that they're um, so what we have to do pre prior to that they were um, giving out die uh, token for for your land return then they switched it to their own governance uh, the loca. Uh, token itself uh, so that then now they're also on the governance token is on the ethereum main net, net which is very expensive uh, for staking and things like that i uh, i had to stake just a, a small amount of uh, loca and then each um I, uh, the initial st uh, staking cost I, I think like somewhere between seven and ten uh, dollars and then every time you add to it it'll, it's a little bit cost on the uh, ethereum network I think if somehow maybe in the future they can rem they can move the local governance to uh, something like a polygon network it'll be cheaper and things like that so the staking process m more and more people will be able to uh, stake it and then add add to it um, so there's stability there i don't think there's a, a an incentive on an individual reward uh, basis there they're improving upon that but i think the incentive uh, on the loca staking program uh, essentially you're better off uh, taking that token your loca vouchers and the loca tokens that you earn during the continent versus continent you're able to extract it from the game and then you're able to reinvest it in other games or projects or uh, elsewhere which is a bad reflection uh, i think in the game is that the game doesn't uh, does not come up with a model that inherently incentivizes you to uh, restake it in the game to earn it in the game to reinvest in the game itself right now you can take it and over a couple of uh, continent versus continent depending on how how many of these local vouchers that you earn you could potentially get a drago but then you know when you get one drago then do you really want or need to have more than one drago per account um with the with the ap um, piece you may only prefer to just have one and you'll progressively develop that and if you have multiple accounts then you can either uh, rotate the dragos to do the the resource minting or you can just um, buy the the cheaper ones again so i i think it's uh it doesn't really strongly incentivize a player to continually reinvest in the game so i, I think that's a uh, that's a bad model from that perspective and also i think um the, the cost for the drago it's it's a pay to win uh program 
I, I think there's not enough uh, cheap dragos for players who are low spenders or free to play model outside of the rental program and we'll, we'll see what the rental program uh what it's like over the next six months after it, it comes out and we'll get a better feel for that um so i i think long term i'm hoping that we'll be able to grow significantly more and uh, over time we'll have players that uh, continue to invest into the system to uh, to grow uh, and I, I think like for my account, I haven't really spent m um, much in the game and I was able to grow to VIP 17 and able to uh, get a decent amount of uh, return from a, a continent versus continent for uh, at least every three continents that I, I can kind of play all out and uh, try to get a little bit higher ranking and things like that. Um, in terms of I, I think the, uh, the future piece, I like the, uh, the Drago concept. Um, I think there's, uh, there's definitely legs in it. There, there needs to be more utility uh, and consideration around the uh, Drago program. So I hope they'll uh, continue to d develop that and they'll continue to have um, uh, other items. Uh, per perhaps they'll create an in-game market or be able to uh, land on a specific um, polygon uh, marketplace where they can uh, maybe per perhaps create a uh, where it's a and it's an official um, n plus uh, low uh, league of kingdoms uh, uh, marketplace that they can uh, encourage players to transact I, I think one of the challenges that i have is uh, looking for dragos and just looking for uh, the the items to purchase, I, I just don't definitively know 100% if it's authentic, if it's the real uh, piece. There's really no uh, definitive way to uh, verify uh, whether it's a, a product that can be uh, totally imported into uh, the game itself. So I, I think that's the disadvantage of being able to use a third party marketplace. Um, like uh, you know, Open Seas, Tofu, those without League of Kingdoms having an official League of Kingdoms page on on there. Uh, so I, I hope that long term, League of Kingdoms will have an official page on one of those, or can take it in house and be able to create a UI UX where it's in house, but they can link it back to the uh, Polygon um, um, uh, marketplace or uh, some kind of. Uh, economy there to be able to increase the uh, security uh, for so that um, the users can increase the reliability and uh, their comfort uh, confidence in the game's integrity uh, from uh, the purchase uh, standpoint. Uh, I think um, also the 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 way the game the game is kind of um, uh, progress uh, progressing. I, I think all the various leagues, all the way to the new. Um, uh, the rookie and the minor uh, league piece. I, I think it's a good format. It's just I, I think the game itself has a lot of lag. And uh, for instance, like um, one of the limitations I have relative to a game like Rise of Kingdoms, and I, I compare a lot to Rise of Kingdoms because there's a lot of elements that they can, or even Lilith's uh, new game Call, Call of Dragons or uh, things like that, that are very similar or use uh, similar elements to it, but they're part of the traditional uh, Web 2 world uh, gameplay. So I think um, well, one, of the, uh, one of the limitations I have is the troops around. Uh, so we have a 3.75 troop max capacity within uh, the current League of Kingdoms uh, format. So what, what makes this uh, very difficult, uh, a large hurdle rate for me, is that uh, how we get compensated and progress to an example is the uh, you, you have the most recent quest where you have to train a hundred thousand troops uh, and then you have to um, uh, get into a certain kills and things like that that earns you ten thousand uh, crystals in the uh, previous event and it's it, it becomes uh, it's difficult after a while you either have to attack someone in your kingdom or you have to delete the troops or you have to make certain sacrifices so it it's very difficult to constantly it's um it's a tiring process to constantly deal with the uh, troop limit in, in the game i think they have to um, increase it um, significantly to be able to compensate uh, older players or players that have been able to progress and uh, this it's an example here like some of the um the close events where you, you can really get um, 
like good rewards for for these like the shields you can get shields you can get the advanced teleports you can get ten thousand crystals so there, there are a lot of elements and reward system that relies on the ability to train troops and kill troops and because if you're in a peaceful continent that's just preparing for the next uh, cbc then you have limitations on how how many troops you can kill then how many and you don't really want to uh, battle a lot prior to the uh, upcoming uh, continent versus continent so you you have a lot of um, the uh, the challenges that go, go into um, that uh, that aspect of it and i i think one of the um, and and also like the uh, within the continent versus continent the uh, the reward structure itself uh, it's it's very difficult the first two weeks because you may have um, a nap um, you have the non aggressive aggression uh, pact between the various continents so you have very little fighting and if you go into like my situation here uh, when I healed up the 508,000 troops and then I add that to here uh, I'm essentially almost near uh, troop capacity and then when I go into the continent versus continent first two weeks if we don't have a lot of battles and the ability to uh, sacrifice I I am basically behind everyone else in the continent that strategically somehow um, you know, they're fortunate enough to have got, re returned to their continent with very little troops and because of deads and they're able to make the uh, correct optimal um, play towards the end of their continent versus continent if it wasn't able to uh, versus like ours. The last week was pretty much um, peaceful because we had limited battles and other continents didn't really want to fight us. They wanted to stay away. So I, I had that particular, the opposite effect, where now I'm, I'm stuck with all these troops. I, I have to deal with it and figure out. And then when I get to continent, the next continent versus continent, I'll be a, at a complete disadvantage compared to some of my other competitors from other continents as well. Um, so th th things like that. I, I think the, con uh, the troop has to be raised and also the lag um, and also how... Uh, the game uh, configures the uh, the defense of the gates and the fortresses, the attacks, the battle calculations. I, I think it's um, it's very easy for me to like if I'm trying to actually um, add to the defense of a gate, but then all of a sudden the other uh, side takes over the gate. Now I'm, they switch me to attack um, attack mode, which I didn't want to, and then because I have uh, limitations on the, the number of troops and I'm not able to move the troops out of my cities and put them in other cities, um, then now I, my my city's vulnerable to being uh, attacked. And so my castle um, is vulnerable to um, being rallied and things like that. So there, there are a lot of things that are outside, and especially if there's lag, I have no control over it. And uh, you know, I'm basically at the game's mercy. I, I think the other... Uh, component is like uh, the the whales, the large accounts, uh, because they they also have the reverse where they take advantage of it because they have um, they they just retain a certain number of troops in their castle because they have max tech, and they have dragos, they have all these things that makes and the the people the the rally leaders in my continent they we, they take advantage of this too so there no no one's immune to this uh, strategy uh, piece of it. So um, they can just empty out their their castles, do the maximum or the minimum rally uh, component, and they, they're they're safe from being rallied because basically they don't have anything outside of their um, their resources. Which uh, for whales they can uh, always get. Um, there's there's plenty, and then there's always opportunities for them to um, uh, to build to pillage uh, other castles as, as well along the way. So they'll be compensated back, and I think they'll be net positive at the end of the continent versus continent event. I, and I, I think also like the um, the total uh, compensation uh, structure, the the reward piece. Uh, I think they'll. I, I hope the game will kind of uh, move and improve in that aspect. Uh, so from a uh, from an overview, I think the uh, League of Kingdoms is very unique. It's a hybrid model between Web two and Web three. So they have uh, multiple different database instance that they have to layer through um, the server. Uh, piece and they have to manage those components, the blockchain and the non-blockchain database, and how they're uh, going to combine it in the end result, and then their uh, battle analytics uh, piece. Uh, so I, I think the game does have a lot of uh, potential. 
and I, I hope it'll grow over time. So my my bet is to uh, put some money into the into this game and continue to reinvest a component into the game. But I I think once a developer uh, improves and further enhances this or gives a, a way, like one of the ways they can do it is to have more consistent um, town halls or AMA. Uh, I think there's definitely a vacuum on that. And I, I think also the access the uh, to the leadership and the thought leadership of the roadmap for the game, uh, it's, um, it's pretty limited. Uh, so as a player, it, uh, it gives it doesn't give me as high of confidence in terms of long-term uh, potential because you want the dev and the leadership team to be accessible to a certain degree. Um, you know, they don't have to be like the Splinterlands uh, leadership where they're accessible on uh, every uh, Monday for their town hall. I, I think uh, if we can have more consistency, uh, more um, consistent uh, town halls or AMA from the leadership and the dev team, um, just to share what it is that they're um, they're trying to do and the progressive roadmap. I, I think uh, once in a while they'll drop little changes and things like that. Um, so I, I think um, for confidence within the developer community for the game and then the stability of the game and then also the long-term growth rate, what they're planning to do, um, so some of the um, uh, the potential ideas that they have for 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 the game to develop uh i, I think it's a, it's a very unique product in terms of the land the, the stackability of the land from continent to the continent the hybrid model of web 2 web 3 i think uh, there are very few games that are currently in, in this mode and i think they can potentially demonstrate that it can be successful it can be built and also they're one of the unique web 3 games where it it can be cleanly implemented on a um, on a mobile platform. They they can exist uh, well on the Android and the Apple and any other. And they're also accessible on the browser as I'm playing on the browser here as well. So there there's a lot. They they give you a lot of game mode. So I hope the the number of players will continue to uh, to grow uh, from that perspective. Um, that's all I have for for now in terms of my um, my thoughts and the uh, current state and the potential for for this game. And I'll talk to you later. Thank you.